the 15th of May 1991 at the Feyenoord Stadium Rotterdam, on probably the greatest night of his football career, Mark Hughes' two goals helped defeat Barcelona in the European Cup Winners' Cup Final. Barcelona, a team that had rejected Mark just three years before. Yeah, there was a lot of talk before the match that um, I would be looking for revenge, and I think the press uh, got onto that angle uh, that I would be looking for revenge against Barcelona. That wasn't really a case. Uh, the only thing I wanted to do was to show Barcelona I was a better player than I was able to show them in my time there. And uh, I think uh, after the game was over, I think that's what I did. But certainly, Mark Hughes has little to prove to those who have watched him and played against him in the English First Division. Mark Hughes gives you value for money. He is available for selection every Saturday, and his courage and his, his, his willingness to play with injuries and pain makes him one of the most outstanding players I've had. Mark Hughes says thank you very much to Manchester United. Well, I'm sure most in halves will testify that um, Mark's one of the most physical and, and hard centre forwards to play against. He, um, everybody knows about him, he would take the knocks. Um, we've also dish him out. Um, he's an aggressive type of character on the pitch, whereas off the pitch he's, he's quite quiet, you know, he he's never really says very much, but when he gets out on the park, um, he's a man possessed. He's, he's determined to win the ball, he's determined to score goals, and. Uh, I think everybody will say they don't look, look forward to playing against Mark. Mark is uh, probably now, I think last season, he's developed his all-round game. Uh, he's probably the most developed all-round centre-forward in the first division at present. So he holds the ball up well, he scores goals, uh, he brings other t people into play and he works hard. And uh, there's not many of them around. Well, you've got to put him up with uh, Greg Johnny Taylor, um, Dennis Law. You know, Bobby Charlton up there, all the great strikers, you know, you know Stuart Pearson's and other, and Mark's right up there with that, all of them. Um, I mean, he's a credit to the club and he's a great ambassador for the club. Well, I mean, you know, you'd look at it as if to say, well, you, I mean, I judge strikers by looking at the same as well. Would I like to play against him week in and week out? Certainly with Mark, but I wouldn't like to do that. I mean, he's, even if he's having an off day, he's only going to give 100%. He's, you know, you're going to get a few big bruises on you. And, um, He's, I would, in his terms of, of rate, he must be up amongst the top half dozen in Europe. Not even twice, don't even touch the ball until it's in the back of the net. Once again, a great run by Gordon Strachan at the heart of it. Outside him is Mark Hughes. Yeah, great he's, finishing. He's very strong. He holds bigger lads off, bigger lads than himself off. And uh, he's, he's got great control on the ball. And he always comes out with uh, some Good special work. goals. Turned by Mark Hughes, 1-1, one, one, back to Old Trafford. Things haven't always been easy for Mark. From a relatively late entry into the United first team, his drinking leading to loss of form and fitness, to his unsuccessful time at Barcelona after a much publicised £2 million transfer. But let's go back to the beginning of the Mark Hughes story, precisely to the 1st of November 1963. He was born in Wrexham, in the hospital, and, um... We were living at a place called Fly at the time, and um, we stayed there till Mark was about four, and then we came to Robin. My father used to play football locally, and Mark's father locally used to play football in a very amateur way, but he used to play, and we all used to go watch him. Well, Mark first got interested in football when he was about seven, I think. He was always kicking a ball, and I think at seven he joined the school team, and that's when he really started take off really. He was always kicking a ball. Well, it didn't have to be a ball, he would kick anything. 
Well, I think I first got interested in, in uh, football locally. Uh, I think like most uh, young lads at uh, the age of about five or six, I think um, you, you, you play in, on your school field, on your schoolyard, and uh, you just uh, get a feeling for the ball. I think uh, from the ages of six to about 16, I, I was never without a ball in my hands, I think. So uh, it was um, just uh, from, from that early stages, I, I just carried on and started playing representative football. I met Mark when I would have been about four or five in infant school. Obviously, Mark's 12 months older than me, but we've always been like close in that respect. That we've always played together. Uh, started from when we were little, fighting together, I suppose, and then as we got older, we got interested in football and then played football. He was the goalkeeper in school because uh, he was the only one who would dive on the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> he used to say to the lads, Show him how you dive on the concrete, Mark, and then he would dive on the concrete. From Ruaban Council School, Mark moved on to the village secondary school, where he was chosen to play for Wrexham District schoolboys. From the early days, um, I didn't really uh, think that I would ever be a professional footballer, but um, uh, when I got to about the ages of 13, uh, 14, and I was playing for our Wrexham District schoolboys then, and, uh, and uh, there was a few club scouts uh, watching me then, and um, they, they showed a little bit of interest, so fr from that stage um, I realised possibly I, I might have a chance, but uh, when you're that young you don't really think that it'll ever happen to you. Really. One or two of the lads got picked up, um, like myself and uh, Phil Williams, and, uh, and I think... Well, Towards the, when we left school, I think uh, there was about four or five players who went to clubs. Um, obviously, uh, they were a little bit older than me, so if, uh, Phil went to to Arsenal um, the year, year before me, and then I went the year after. Um, Phil uh, is a different character to me uh, completely. Um, he's he was a tricky left winger, and he was he's like a bottle of pop and uh, on and off the pitch. But I think. Uh, he had problems settling in London because even more so than me settling in Manchester. The press have never actually been able to appreciate that the lad is a manager's dream. If you've got one player that you want to put on your side, that's going to do 90 minutes worth of work, that's what Sparky is. He's not always spectacular, although he does score the spectacular goals. Most of his work is just basically wearing defenders down. He's a physical... He's not the biggest lad if you were if you were next to him having a pint. He's about five foot eleven, five foot, five foot ten. He wouldn't frighten you in a pub. But if you put a red shirt on him, he'd certainly frighten you. I was spotted by Manchester United by, um, by a man called Hugh Roberts and uh, he came to uh, watch uh, Wrexham District School Boys and uh, and he, he uh, sent Christmas cards to me um, and everything and just made in the initial approach, really. Because he was the first in, I always, I always had a feeling towards him in Manchester United. First saw Mark when he was 12. He was playing in a county game for Wrexham under-13s. And he was playing against Flintshire under-13s at Flint. And as I recall, it was a really frosty morning and bitterly cold. And you stood on the line and you're watching all these 13 year olds. And then suddenly I noticed the striker for Wrexham. And he was shielding the ball, he was laying off the ball, doing all the things a professional would do. Now, watching Mark then is just the same as watching Mark now. After signing for United, there were yet more football honours in store for Mark. From there, I was able to progress. I played for North Wales schools, and then uh, I went for a couple of trials for the Welsh school boys. Um, my first year, uh, because I was a year younger, I didn't get in, but uh, my second year, uh, when I was in the fourth year, I was able to get in. and. Uh, and I made the Welsh team and uh, I was quite lucky really because that year um, there was a lot of schoolboy games and, uh, and I was fortunate enough to play against England schoolboys at Wembley which for a 14, 15 year old was a great thrill win. I scored in that game actually, yeah, uh, but uh, unfortunately there was a referee from Bristol, i never forget him, and uh, 
and he decided in his wisdom that he was going to disallow a 15-year-old boy's uh, only ever goal that he was going to score at that stage at Wembley. He was throwing from the left and um, somebody flicked it onto the edge of the box, somebody laid it back and it, it bounced once actually, uh, about knee height and uh, I volleyed it straight into the top of the, top of the net. And, uh, I didn't realise for about 10 minutes after that I was disallowed because they couldn't catch me, you see, I was running out of the stadium. So. Well, the, the year I played in the Welsh school, boys, um, we had a, quite a good team. Um, we got to the finals of the European school boy championships and uh, we played against uh, Northern Ireland in the, in the final. Um, unfortunately, there was a lad called uh, Norman Whiteside playing at that stage and uh, he just bashed us about a bit and uh, we couldn't cope with him. But, uh, yeah, it was a good side. Uh, there was myself, there was uh, Clayton Blackmore and Mark Boyne and uh, a few other players that have uh, played in lower leagues, uh, so it was quite a good scene. The first time I met Mark was in, was a Welsh schoolboy trial and uh, he brought, I think it was a man new tracksuit down to me. No, it wasn't a very good one either, was it? No, it was uh, one of the old stock which they sent down to yeah. us. I thought it was quite good at the time, like, but I think that's the first time I met him. And uh, we played the, that year together in the schoolboys. I think it was 11 internationals. We had a competition. We got to the final of that. We beat England in our group, and yeah. I think we played Northern Ireland in the final. Mm. We won't mention the score. No. On the 1st of November 1980, Mark Hughes signed as a professional for Manchester United. To go from a small place like Rouen uh, to go to a big club like United, it's obviously um, just a young lad and your first time away from your home and it's, it's, it's a big step but um, like a lot of people beforehand uh, they were saying well you should go and play for a smaller club and then, then you can always go up. But, uh, even from smaller clubs you can go down, so um, I always felt that uh, you have to start at the top and hopefully you can stay there. Because you're playing with better players and you need better facilities and uh, all around it's got to be better for your game. Then. My fears when he first went to Manchester were that he was just going to go. <laughs> but, um, I remember taking him and um, we met Joe Brown at the lodgings that he was going to be staying at. And, all seemed very nice and when I left Mark behind I remember saying to Joe Brown, he was the chief scout at United then, that um, you've got my most treasured possession there, you look after him, I remember saying that. <laughs> and well I was very sad coming home but that was on the Monday and I think on the Saturday Mark was back home for the weekend so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I, I think having a stable base uh, and um, off the field uh, just keeps you relaxed and um, then you can just concentrate on, on your football um, because at an early age that's that's all you've got to think about really. If, if you've got other distractions that outside the game, well, you're going to suffer. Um, you've got to be help, happy off the pitch or you don't perform on it, as they say. So um, uh, I was very lucky uh, because uh, a lot of the other, other apprentices uh, have had problems and uh, I was just very fortunate that I was able to spend uh, my formative years uh, at a place so, so warm and friendly as uh, Annie and Tommy's. When I first went there, I was a midfield player and, uh, and really uh, I, I was struggling at one stage and, uh, and it didn't look like uh, I would be making any progress whatsoever and I think it was just... Uh, the last uh, chance for me, really, that uh, a, a man who was the youth team coach there, Sid Owen, he, uh, he decided in his wisdom that uh, the only way I was going to get a game was by pushing me up front. And uh, uh, he pushed me up front. I had a couple of games, scored a few goals, and I stayed there ever since. I made my breakthrough um, when I was about uh, 1920, which um, I think probably is a, a little bit late for, for most players. I think they usually uh, make a breakthrough a little bit earlier. But uh, when I was there, um, I was quite far back um, in the queue for, for places, really. Uh, there was likes of um, Noel Whiteside had just broken through. Um, people like Scott McGarvey, uh, Frank Stapleton, uh, and, and they bought uh, Alan Brazil as well. So um, I, was, uh, I was way down uh, when I first got through. But I, I think the... Like in most occasions,